This video is all about button control of sequencers using Falcon Pi Player and various buttons. Uh, arcade type buttons is basically what I'm after. So this is a typical, these are typical arcade type buttons. You can get them in lots of different sizes. Um, they come, you know, in different shapes. You can get triangular ones and they're fairly cheap. You can pick them up fairly cheap if you shop around uh, and then just with a, a plate in front to make it look pretty. And then all the buttons and gubbins, if you like a control are inside a IP66 box, which makes it waterproof, which is particularly important in the, in the UK. Um, and you can have, you know, multiple buttons. You can have one button, two button, you know, whatever number of buttons you want. The other things I'm going to talk about uh, is the use of uh, passive infrared. So this is a wireless passive infrared that you'll see in the presentation. And at the end of the video, if you stick around, I'll actually show this all in operation, working with Falcon Pi Player and how it interacts with Falcon Pi Player. And again, just for completeness, these are the kind of controls that you can use if you want to use just old fashioned remote controls as well. Um, and the transmitter, the key thing that I found, which was very useful for me, uh, are these little uh, RF433 transmitters, which are fairly cheap. You can buy them in, in ones or you can buy them in packs of five, uh, but the individual, they're about $6. You can get it down to about $2 if you pay if you buy them in packs. But again, I'll talk about that in the presentation. At the end of the presentation, uh, I'll actually show a demo of all this. But in the presentation, I'm going to show how I, I mean, there's lots of ways of doing this, and I'll show you my thought processes about why I chose this particular method. Um, you may agree, you may disagree, but I'd be interested in your comments. So put comments in the thing if you would just saying you know if you found a better solution or what you think of the solution just general thoughts in the comments would be great when i first started looking at this the easiest option for setting up buttons to connect to control falcon pie player uh, was by just using straightforward wires uh, the reason the amplifier and speakers are shown there by the way is just because i use an amplifier set at a certain volume connected to speakers and then control that volume from within Falcon Pi Player because it's got quite a good uh, volume control which means I don't have to mess around with this thing. But anyhow, the, the easiest way is to just use wires. The downside to this is because the GPIO pins are 3.3 volts, you are kind of limited to the distance. Not so much for operation, but if you have these wires too long, you can get false interference signals that particularly on things like PIRs that set them off. So um, I, in, I decided not to go that route. The second option I looked at is you can, to, to get around those length problems, you can get various devices that in effect uh, multi, multiplex the signals together, send them through uh, in, a, in a more balanced way on, on a balanced line so you can have a lot longer connection, usually some like a Cat6 cable through to another demuxer if you like that then connects to the gpio pins but again one of my big uh things i'm trying to achieve is to cut down on the number of wires make the uh, whole system as reliable as possible and to be able to uh, put it out and take it down very quickly so it was a good solution um but uh, i continued looking on so the next solution i looked at was using a tablet so you could use uh, an, a tablet with a web, basically a web page on it, making a HTTP API call through to the Falcon Pi Player. There's a very good API on uh, on Falcon Pi Player. Downside to that is, yeah, you can do the buttons, but you can't really do a PIR. So you're still stuck with wiring uh, a PIR, which I tend to use for Halloween to start a sequence so that when they come in, it actually starts a projector in a sequence. So I do need the PIR function. The other problem is that the tablets, you know, unless you get a really cheap one, you've got to try and waterproof them, put them in some kind of... So I really like the arcade button style thing. They're cheap enough, you can get the arcade buttons, and they're fairly weather resistant. So in the end, uh, the one I actually went with, uh, for, for my use, was uh, using um, old-fashioned technology, really. Uh, kind of thing you get on door, garage door openers, Basically, it's uh, 433 megahertz, which is quite a low frequency, but it's got really good range. And you can get these things, they've been, it's been around forever. You can see, so you can get, typically, you can get over 200 feet if you 
set the voltages right and set it up all right. And even if there are walls in the way, because it's a low frequency, because 433 is a lot high, a lot lower than your typical Wi-Fi, which is generally at least 2.4 gigahertz, uh, low frequencies pass through brick walls, which in the UK uh, is a very good thing, especially as I keep my Raspberry Pi in the house because I connect it to an internal projector. Uh, so you've got to go through various brick walls in my case. And I found this a very reliable solution for that. Plus it gets rid of all the wires. There is literally, it's a completely wireless solution. The price is not too bad for the, um, the main key component, the most expensive part, if you like, is this uh, RF to MQTT bridge. And the reason I do that is because, again, with this solution, you don't have to use the GPIO pins. The Falcon Pi player has got a very good integration with a, a protocol called MQTT, which is designed for Internet of Things. It's a really good integration, which means that if you get a standard MQTT bridge that bridges MQTT to the 433 megahertz world, if you like, the buttons and the remote controls and the PIRs, um, it's it's quite a good solution. And again, this kind of thing, it's it, you can pick them up for, well, I picked them up for about $15. Uh, it's called a Sonoff RF433 MQTT bridge. Bit of a mouthful. The On the button side of things, if you ignore the price of the, because you're going to, if you're going to use arcade buttons and a, some kind of box and a battery and wires, you, you're in with a fixed cost. But the actual cost of the 433 bit is you can get a transmitter for about $6. I mean, I've actually picked up five that work out at nearly $2 each if you buy them like that. But they're, they're really, you know, they are really cheap. They're fairly easy. I'll show you in a later video. They're easy to implement. Uh, there are four channels, so you can have four buttons. If you wanted eight buttons on one panel, you just use two units. Um, very easy to use as, as again I'll show that in a later button later button in a later uh, video again the PIRs wireless again you can pick these up pretty good ones for about $10 uh, they're just something like AA batteries in the thing I mean I only put them out at Halloween um, but they are you know they are cheap as chips and there's no wiring to it you just basically switch it on again you've got that you know a few hundred feet foot range to the actual uh, uh, MQTT bridge and if you want to, you can also use your standard um, remote controls. So if, and I'll mention later on, you've got to make sure it's the right um, encryption technology. And most of them are all the same, but I'll explain that in a later video. But again, you can pick these up for, for three buttons. You can pick them up for about $6. And so you can, and I tend to use it if I want to mute something or stop a sequence. So you can have it do what you want, but it gives you that extra flexibility. You're limited on this bridge to about 16 buttons. Uh, so you can have, I mean, I've shown eight here, I think, but you can have six. So you can have any combination of buttons, remote controls and PIRs. There's a software limit of about 16, uh, but you can actually, uh, if you have, if anybody's interested, uh, you can actually break that limit, but it's a bit more fiddly. Uh, I mean, you can have a thousand if you wanted, but it is a bit more fiddly. The one I'm going to show is a 16 button system. And so you've got that, uh, 433 technology to the bridge. The bridge is then connected to the Raspberry Pi just on 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, and I say no GPIO pins, which is which is neat. The way it works then, if you imagine uh, each button has a unique code, usually it's a six digit code, example here, B22508. Um, and what you do is, is and every one is, is, is unique. So what you do, is on the Sonoff bridge, you load a bit of open source software called Tasmota. And again, I'll do a video showing you how to do that. It's not too hard. Uh, and once you've got that software on there, you've got a web page and you can configure the, uh, you can basically map or learn the what the buttons are and map them to the 16 keys. So what you do is you say, you set this thing into learning mode for key one, you press that button and it picks up that number and associates to it. Once it's done that, it's there permanently unless you want to remap it. So it's a one-off thing. So you set your various buttons, you know, up to 16 uh, and, and that's the learning part of it finished. And, you know, it'll you switch it off and it'll all remember that in uh, in, uh, in in ROM. You then, uh, it's, that's then mapped to variables and I'll explain why in a minute. So not to worry about it. Again, it's a one-off thing. You run this once. It maps variable one to key one, 
variable two to key two, et cetera, et cetera. The clever part is that you can define using FPP, you can control how that variable is mapped to a API call. And you can do it dynamically, which is really neat. Uh, because what you can basically do is you can have in part of your playlist, you can have a, uh, a lead in uh, that basically says, uh, run an MQT command, set variable one to whatever you want. API call, in this case, it's volume increase by steps of 10. So button one then is associated with steps of 10. So when somebody presses that button, uh, it goes through and sets in, goes in, sends an MQT command to, to Falcon Pi Player that increases the volume by 10. And again, I'm mapped, in this case, I've mapped uh, volume uh, button two to decrease volume by 10. So in effect, that means that these two buttons are, in this case, up and down volume by in increments of 10. But the neat thing is you can map them to anything. So in this case, I've shown the PIR map to start playlist main show, which is one of my playlists. And again, you can map there. If you look on Falcon Pi Player, there are a load of really good API calls for just about anything you can think of. Pausing a show, literally anything that you can do in Falcon Pi Player, as far as I can see, you can do from an API call. And the neat thing is, as I say, you can map these dynamically so in this in this particular playlist it maps it for the volume but i could have another playlist that maps it for the sequence so it's 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 purely dynamic and you do it all you don't do anything on once you've done this bit on the bridge you don't do anything with tasmota or anything else you do it all via mqtt commands from the falcon pi player and at the end of a sequence what i typically do is is to actually set that same variable but just set them to blank so that if somebody presses one of these buttons or operates a PIR outside of the playlist sequence which you can obviously you can schedule in uh, it does nothing so in effect you can disable the keys and I say on the next playlist you can map the buttons to be compl something completely different but there's no messing around with wires or scripts or anything else you do it all from within MQTT uh, which is built into uh, Falcon Pi Player. Uh, really neat. As I promised, a very quick demonstration. So this is the one in the slides, which is the button sound control. So I press, the, press play to play the sequence. It starts playing the sequence at volume 30. And then if I press the button, top button, in this case, button one, it increases it by 10 to 40. And each subsequent press, it'll increase it by 10 because that's what we put in the API. So again, 50. Again, 60, 70, and then finally 80. Then the other button decreases it by 10. So you press it once, it'll go down to 70. Again, down to 60. Again, down to 50. And one more, down to 40. So you've got volume control. This, as you can see, it is really wireless, purely 433 technology. If we look at another sequence then, this one actually is going to sit there waiting it's the main show, but with a button control. So it'll start playing when I press the button. Just press the button off screen then. And it's actually playing now. So it plays the sequence. And then the, other, the second button actually stops the sequence. It's not a graceful stop. It's a complete stop. Stops the thing. Just to show you how it works. But you can put a graceful stop in. So we press it again. Start the sequence. Goes through a three second pause. Because I've got in the, that in the lead in. And then it starts the sequence. And then finally, stop the sequence again. As I say, you could do a graceful stop. You could do anything you can with an API. Really, uh, the APIs are really no good. Solutions no solutions perfect, but this one worked well for me. In my opinion, the against on this one is it's the build time is 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 a bit of a you know, it's a one off thing, but it's quite time consuming. Um, if people are interested, I'll produce a, a set of smaller videos for each bit: how to make the button, how to make the bridge. Uh, but even then, it would probably take somebody a good day or maybe even two to actually build the thing. Um, that's probably the biggest against. It's not the cheapest solution. Wires are obviously the cheapest solution. You know, they're dirt cheap. But it's also not the most expensive solution. Um, but the fours, for me personally, it's the how quick I can deploy it. I take it out of its box, switch the battery on, connect it up outside. And of course, particularly with me having an inside <laughs> Raspberry Pi, it's you know it's a matter of seconds to deploy it, and similarly to take it down, it's a matter of seconds. Um, that for me is a big thing. Wouldn't be for everybody. 
Uh, but I'm, you know, I'm on a, that's one of my little tasks is to try and make things fast. The other thing that I really like about it is the flexibility. You know, I can program it from within FPP. So I can decide that's this button does this in this sequence, as I've just shown you. So for me, probably for anybody who's interested, it's the flexibility that's probably one of the most interesting things if you need that kind of thing. Uh, if you do, please like and subscribe and and let me know in the comments and I'll go away and start producing the other little videos. How to, it does involve the most complex one, which I've actually started making, is how to get Tasmota onto the FPP bridge. It takes, the you know, I've done the thing, it takes about 20 minutes, but you would need to watch the video probably four or five times to actually get it cracked. Um, anyhow, you'll, you'll see if, if I produce the video, if people are interested. Hope that all makes sense. Cheers.